settling in and the technology is working. We've got a few people that I see are just signing in. We'll wait a few minutes while everybody begins. But while we uh, while we wait for all the attendees to join our session, I just wanted to expend, extend a, a real warm welcome. And thank you to everybody who's attending and to our panelists today. Um, this is the third webinar uh, about cybersecurity we've done this spring. We started with one with was an update on the cybersecurity landscape and what's changing in 2022. If you missed it, uh, go to f12.net. You'll see it in our resources there and uh, you can catch up on it. And if you don't want to watch the whole 45 minute uh, discussion, there's a little synopsis. You can just scan it in a couple of minutes and get caught up with, with some of the important changes in 2022. And then we had a really interesting discussion, a, a peek behind the scenes from um, some legal experts who've been on the other side, the breach side, the post-incident side of cyber attacks. And they shared what that's like, how businesses have to respond, and, uh, and really what lessons can be drawn from their experience to help businesses get prepared and be equipped for uh, a cyber incident. Highly recommend uh, that discussion. And again, there's a synopsis and you can you can find it linked to on f12.net or website. But today, our discussion, I am extremely excited for today's discussion. We're going to dig into a program, a federal program called Cybersecure Canada. I'm extremely passionate about this program. Everyone at F12 is extremely passionate about this program. And uh, you may have seen our, our advertisement for that it's the, the great program that uh, you maybe never have heard about. And, uh, and there's a reason for that. It was launched just as we were entering a, you know, international pandemic. So the news cycles and the government understandably was focused on some other things, but uh, the time has come, past come for us to shine a spotlight on that. And today we have somebody from Cybersecure Canada. I'm really excited to, to welcome Vanessa uh, up, up to the stage. Vanessa, it, she'll be joining us shortly, is from Cybersecure Canada. We're then going to talk to Calvin, our CTO, and we've got a really special guest, Eddie. Eddie is from Timmins Mechanical Solutions. No connection to F12, um, but uh, he's not in a technology business. He's one of the first organizations to embrace Cybersecure Canada, is a passionate promoter of the program. I really want to explore with him why they're passionate about the program, what it's meant for their business, what uh, enrollment in the program, what it felt like, and, and I learned a little bit more about that experience because I thought that was uh, really interesting to see, uh, to have somebody who's at the you know forefront that's not in the technology space like F12. All right, so if I could invite Vanessa Garofalo up to the stage. Vanessa, as she comes up, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to give a little bit of an introduction. She's a senior policy analyst with Cybersecure Canada, and uh, she's going to tell us about what Cybersecure Canada is, why it exists. She's prepared a slide deck. Hi, Vanessa. We're extremely grateful to have a representative of the Government of Canada, really, of this program to come and explain it. Um, we've talked a lot about it at F12, so hopefully some of the folks who've joined us, if they've heard about us, uh, we're, we're very proud, which we'll get to when we talk to Calvin about why F12 has embraced this program. I have a bunch of questions about the program. And and I know you're you're going to cover some of them, so mm -hmm. I want to let everyone else know. You may have questions on the on the side of this this AirMeet platform we're in. You can ask questions in the Q and A, and we're going to have some time at the end of this to, uh, to to filter those questions to bring them up. I have some of my own about you know where it fits within the 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 complex Canadian government architect, you know, the whole regime and and, uh, and how it got started and, and various elements like that. But I know you've got a really tight presentation. So everybody understands the agenda. Vanessa's going to have the floor for a little while here with a PowerPoint presentation that's going to you know, quickly kind of summarize the program, give you everything you need to know from a high level. We're then going to bring up Calvin to explain uh, F12's journey with the program. And then Eddie uh, is a, kind of a star attraction we have at the end. So make sure you stay for that. Um, Vanessa, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing me here today. And very excited to be here and speaking to your audience. I'm going to really quickly pull up my deck and then we can get started. Fantastic. Okay, so I will just start my presentation. Devin, if you can just let me know if we're all good and you're seeing my screen. Okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good morning, depending on where you're joining from. Uh, like Devin mentioned, my name is Vanessa Gruffalo. I work at Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, and I'm very pleased to be here talking about the Cybersecure Canada program. Um, I want to thank F12 for hosting this event and you know, giving us this audience and this venue to speak to so many of you. 
So in terms of what we hope to cover for today, I'm going to start by giving you an overview of the Cybersecure Candidate Program, tell you a little bit about who we are, um, why cybersecurity is essential. Obviously, um, if a number of you have tuned in today, you obviously are well aware that cybersecurity is essential, but uh, always helpful to kind of give you some stats and information to really back that up. I'll walk you through the certification process, and then we'll close on what the baseline cybersecurity controls for our program are. So um, without any further hesitation, let's get started. So, you know, what is Cybersecure Canada? Cybersecure Canada is a voluntary cybersecurity program for small and medium organizations. And, you know, what do we mean when we say small and medium organizations? We're really following that Statistics Canada definition of organizations under 500 employees. So the program was developed in collaboration with the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity, and they're the Government of Canada's experts on cybersecurity. And it's based on 13 security controls that organizations will implement, achieve compliance against, and then they're audited. And upon the completion of a successful audit, you get a certification mark that's valid for two years. And really, it just serves as that kind of visual signifier that you can use to your partners, your supply chain, your investors, that you've taken action on cybersecurity and that you meet a national standard. So that's kind of very at a high level of what the program is. Um, you know, Devin talked a little bit about, you know, where we fit in the government kind of landscape. And I think it's important to provide a little bit of that just to kind of help you understand how the program was developed and how it's, it's kind of run. And so I really like to emphasize that our program is very much a partnership. And, you know, it's developed and delivered in collaboration with our three partners that you see on the screen here. So. You know, on the far left there, you see Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. That's where I work. We are you know, form formerly, we were called Industry Canada. We, um, we've helped develop the program and we kind of implement it on a day-to-day -day basis, but we work very closely with our two partners there. So the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity, I've mentioned there are technical leads on the development of those 13 security controls. And, you know, they're the Government of Canada experts. So you might be familiar, they're a part of, it's called the Communication Security Establishment. And that's a part of government that's the agency that's responsible for, you know, foreign signals, intelligence, and cyber operations. So really, you know, those experts within government that are focused on cybersecurity at a national level on a daily basis. And then our other partner there that you'll see is the Standards Council of Canada. So, you know, we work with them very closely because they help accredit the organizations that act as auditors for our program. So we call them certification bodies and they go through a rigorous process by the Standards Council. So, you know, we all work in collaboration to really have that whole of government approach to cybersecurity. So, you know, why is cybersecurity important? And, you know, I'm sure many of you are aware, it seems, you know, you can't turn on the news every day without information of a new cyber attack, you know, ransomware attack, you know, impacting everybody from government, business, hospitals, you know, airlines like Sunwing, as I'm sure we all know, um, you know, and, and not surprisingly, you know, with COVID and more businesses going online, it's happening more frequently. You know, these attacks are becoming more prevalent. They're more sophisticated, you know, and in 2020 alone, we've seen a 300% increase. And so, you know, why is this happening? You know, why are these threat actors targeting Canadian businesses? And there's a number of reasons, really. But ultimately, you know, these, these criminal threat actors, they want access to Canadian businesses because they want access to things like their payment information, you know, their financial information, data about their customers, you know, their proprietary information, their IP, and all that kind of things. And for cyber threat actors, it's really easy to target these small businesses because two main reasons. One being, you know, their information may be less protected. And two, it's it might be a little bit more challenging for these smaller organizations to recover from these types of attacks. And as you can see on the slide there, you know, it can have devastating impacts on slides on small businesses. So, you know, things like financial loss, reputational damage, job losses, business closure. Um, you know, and I'll give you some really scary stats, but according to the Insurance Bureau of Canada, 60% of small businesses that were targeted by a cyber attack had to close down six months after it happened. 
And of those businesses that were attacked, 41% said it cost them over $100,000 to recover. So, you know, really scary statistics, some really sobering stats there. But, you know, the good news is we're not here to scare you today. We're here to empower you and give you that important information. And more importantly, let you know that there are some really concrete actions that you can take to protect yourself and your organization and really increase your cyber posture. So I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide because this slide outlines the pathway that an organization will go through through the certification process. So I'll spend a little bit of time walking you through the steps and explain a little bit about what happens at each stage in the process. Um, you know, the first thing I just also want to highlight before I walk you through this are the two main questions that I get asked when I speak to businesses about this program. They ask, you know, how long does this take and how much does this cost? So with regards to how long it takes, you know, it's very much going to depend on your business and your organization. So if you have decided that your organization really wants to dedicate the time, the energy, the resources to this, Typically, we found it takes organizations, you know, between six to eight months to complete the whole certification process. It's going to take you a little bit longer if perhaps you're starting from, you know, a less advanced cyber baseline. So, you know, maybe a little bit longer than one year, but generally we find the six to eight months. But again, it's very much driven by the organization. So if, if you want to really dedicate the time, you can obviously move through implementing these controls a lot quicker. And then the second thing I'll just flag is the cost. So there is a cost associated with being certified. And these are the costs that you will pay to the auditor to conduct the audit. Um, generally, we have found that for an organization to be audited, it's going to run you between two to $5,000. Uh, it's going to depend on a number of factors. So things like how many employees you have, how complex the data you store is, how many internet connected devices your organization has. But generally, you know, it will be in that two to $5,000 range. And, you know, just one note that I'll say about that is that, you know, it's very much priced with that SME market in mind, because, you know, just as a comparator, there is a lot of, you know, third party cybersecurity organizations that tend to run upwards of $20,000 a year. So this program was kind of designed to address that gap in between. Um, so, you know, another thing I'll add here is that the bulk of the work for this process is going to take place in steps one and two. So, you know, when you're really preparing and then when you're actually implementing those controls. So the first thing your organization is going to do is you're going to prepare to implement those controls. And really, this can be done in one of two ways. So you can either engage a service provider and, you know, typically for smaller organizations that don't have that dedicated IT resource, you can reach out to, you know, a managed service provider. So somebody like F12 or other organizations can help you go about implementing those controls and make sure that you're implementing them properly. The other way to help prepare to implement the controls is through our new e-learning module series. So this is something new that we've launched and we're really excited about it. And what this is, it's 13 free e-learning videos and modules that correspond to what each of the 13 controls. So, you know, it's designed to, you know, if you're just wanting to learn about one particular control area that you're not as familiar with, you can go and watch the video. It'll give you the training, it'll quiz you, there's some great templates, and that can really kind of give you a little bit of guidance into how to implement those controls. So after that, you're going to actually, this is where the rubber hits the road and you're going to implement the security controls. And you know, what does that mean? What that means is that you're going to work across your organization. You're going to work with your leadership team and make sure that you have those policies and procedures in place. So things like, you know, do you have a password policy? Do you have an incidence response plan? You know, that's when you're actually going to sit down and develop those policies and procedures and make sure that you're following the guidance that the program provides so that you are sufficiently covered. After that, you're going to select the certification body or the auditor. We do have four of them, so we encourage people to speak to more than one just to see which one will best fit the needs of your organization. Then you'll go through our portal, you'll request to be audited, and then the audit will begin and you'll be required to provide all of that supporting documentation and advice. So, you know, you're going to they're going to ask to see a copy of that incidence response plan. They're going to ask to see a copy of the password policies. And once you have that, hopefully your audit will be successful. If not, you'll be given the opportunity to go away and make those continued improvements. 
Then you'll achieve the certification, which is valid for two years. At some point in that two-year period, the certification body will conduct a spot audit just to make sure that everything is still accurate and those controls are still being adequately implemented. And then down the line, you'll have the option to recertify. So this is what the certification mark looks like. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the benefits of, of why you should consider certifying, but just wanted to show you here very quickly what it looks like. Obviously, the expiry date will say 2024 because it will be two years from today's date, but it's really just that recognized symbol that you've met a national standard, you've taken those steps, and you've done those baseline activities that you're considering for cybersecurity. I spoke a little bit about the certification bodies. And again, these are private IT companies that have been certified by the Standards Council. They've gone through you know, a rigorous certification process and they meet an international standard to really let them be able to audit and implement the program on behalf of ISET. They do operate at arm's length and they are private businesses. So they all have their own pricing model and business models. So when you're considering working with a certification body, you know, you're going to need to um, determine that which one you're going to work with. So speak to more than one to just see which is best uh, for your organization's needs. And so this is one really important element of the program that um, I'm excited to talk about. And this is a national standard for cybersecurity. So uh, back in November of 2021, there was a national cybersecurity standard developed that aligns with our program. So. The name of the standard is right there. It's the CAN CIOSC, and it is a national standard that has those 13 controls of our program. So that now when you get the certification for our program, you can also say that you are in alignment with a national standard. What it does is it takes those 13 security controls and it splits them in two. So level one for organizations that are just starting their cyber journey and level two for more mature organizations. But the important thing to note here is that organizations that are certified will have to meet those level two requirements. So the more, um, you know, the more rigorous standard. And so starting in this month, our program is going to be auditing against this new standard. And, you know, anyone who achieves a certification can say that they meet that Canada wide cybersecurity standard for small and medium organizations. Um, just closing off here, I want to spend a little bit of time on the slide because this, these are the 13 security controls. So I've mentioned them many times throughout the program. I just like this slide because it shows them all in a really kind of plain language way. And, you know, when I talk to organizations, I really like to kind of describe these 13 controls as it's your pathway. If you're starting to think about cybersecurity for the first time, you know, you might be a little bit overwhelmed. You don't know what you should be doing. These 13 steps right here are the baseline, bare minimum things that you need to be thinking about and implementing across your organization. So like I mentioned before, you know, you have an incidence response plan. You're sitting down, you're taking the time to write down, if my organization undergoes a cyber breach, how will we contact our customers? How are we protecting our data? Who in our organization is going to be responsible and for what activities? You know, you're doing things like you're having multi-factor authentication on all your devices. You're providing employee awareness training. So you're making sure you're getting at your employees and really touching on that element of human error that's often responsible for a lot of cyber breaches. So, you know, these are the 13 actions. Again, just want to emphasize, these are intended to be very baseline, bare minimum. Your organization, depending on which sector you are, might benefit from something a little bit beyond that. But for those small businesses that have never even thought about cybersecurity, really just like to say, this is a great place to start and those bare minimum activities and actions that you should be doing. So with that, um, I will uh, wrap up my portion of this presentation and I will be happy to kind of throw it back to Devin now. Fantastic. Well, you know, Vanessa, thank you so much for a, a really quick synopsis of the program. You know, if you if, if anybody Google Cyber, Cyber Secure Canada, there's a wealth of resources on the website, and I think we're gonna we're gonna make sure we get your your slide deck as well as some resources to that. I was really you know excited to hear about the training modules. I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic to help organizations organizations get going. And there's really good human readable, can I say, explanations of each of those 13 controls. Um, so uh, great resources. I, 
I, w- I want to say, like, I'm, I'm so excited about this program, and I want to discuss with you just a few minutes, Vanessa, about the program and why I like it. One thing, so much of the news and so much of the attention around cybersecurity, in my opinion, comes about enterprises, right? We hear mm-hmm. about Equifax, or we hear about Home Depot, or we hear about the big companies that get breached. And, uh, and I think a lot of business owners and leaders go, well, well, that's not me. I'm not Equifax. And the businesses we support are not uh, generally large enterprises. They're, they're the small and medium organizations you are referencing. But what we see is the carnage from the, the family doctor or the 75 person manufacturing plant or the et cetera, et cetera, where they're getting hit and, uh, and, and sometimes fraudulently transferring money. So really curious to hear what, what, what was the pedigree of this program? Where did it originate from? Cause I know, I understand it wasn't just born a couple of years ago out of, out of whole cloth. It was, it, it kind of came from some other um, things that were happening in the background. Is that right, Vanessa? That is, yeah. And, you know, it's based on a lot of the best practices that are out there. There's a program out of the UK called Cyber Essentials that, you know, is kind of the gold standard of these certification programs for government. And certainly where we've drawn a lot of the emphasis from and and kind of where we would hope to take that program to really at some point have it be, you know, mandatory requirements that if you are doing business with government, if you are looking to, you know, you know, whether you're engaging in some kind of procurement with government to have, at a bare minimum, these standards, um, you know, it's still early days. There's still a lot more work to be done, but that's a little bit of how some of the program came to be. Well, I know you're not a political representative, so you don't have to comment on this, but I'm going to share, my, I'm just going to get on my soapbox for a minute. That's okay. It, it infuriates me, maybe even ashames me that in Canada, we always seem to be at the behind the ball on this and that we're doing things because gdpr told us we're doing things because cmmc in america told us and not because canada is organically saying you know what this is what it takes to do business in canada and i feel in my industry um the the it services unlike every every other major professional services organization there's no body that govern standards there's no uh oversight there's no accountability and it can get to feel like we're a car, we're selling a car, and then we're having to upsell airbags and ABS mm. and backup lights. And these things should be required. They should be built in. You can't build a an office building without fire codes. You shouldn't be able to build IT without essential IT elements. And what I love about the 13 controls is they're not pie in the sky. Mm-hmm. They're, um, if I could use three terms, they're uh, affordable, they're achievable, and they're effective for even the smallest organizations that so i i just think it's great i'll get off my uh, it's not this isn't the this isn't the forum for devon to preach but i i did want to say why I'm, I'm i'm so pleased to see them there are other more rigorous certifications like SOC 2 type 2 and all the rest but this is achievable these are the these are the things that that should happen um Really appreciate it, Vanessa. Do you mind staying? Because I, I know there'll be questions come up. We've got some going, but we want to bring in our next panelist now and and uh, you know have a bit of a dialogue and get to the Q and A. So thank you for the presentation. Well, as I said, we'll share that. We'll bring in Calvin Engen, our F12 CTO. So Calvin, I know security is like you're crazy passionate about it, and it's it's your thing. If I were to if I were to put it that way, and uh, you know I've seen you bring in these same controls into F12. I wanted to first of all ask, we're proud to be, I I believe, uh, certainly amongst the first companies in Canada to to embrace Cybersecure Canada, and I believe the first IT managed service provider. Um, So going back, like program just launched, you jumped on it right away. Why? Yeah, well, you know what? It was interesting because um, Vanessa made mention that there was a Cyber Essentials program, and there was actually a Cyber Essentials program in Canada. It was short-lived. It was only a couple of years. We, in fact, embraced that one as well. And once this one became a federally recognized program, this is the first of its kind, um, I knew we had to jump on it. Because one, um, the one thing that I really lean into is that F12 has to be the advocate. And if we're going to, uh, to help our clients on the journey towards creating more secure organizations and people, we wanted to do the same. And so this wasn't our first stab at uh, going in down the certification path. As many know, we are SOC 2 Type 2 certified, but that is a rigorous, high um, expensive standard, <laughs> expensive, 30 to 40 yeah. grand a year. Um, and it's a lot of effort. 
whereas this program is the entry point and uh, the controls are are obtainable achievable like uh, you were mentioning Devin and so this just became in an avenue for us to um, to move forward on our own security posture which many of the controls were already uh, done in our organization but gives us the opportunity to uh, have our clients now come in and uh, I really think from a Canadian perspective that the SMB space, the SME space in general, um, just doesn't have the awareness. And this is what I'm really excited is this is a federal program that is creating awareness around the security needs of our uh, of our supply chains across the nation. And so um, I'm saddened just the same as you to see that, you know, we're 2022 and just kind of getting started. But you know what, it's, it's better late than never. And I'm excited to see that this is an iterative process it's only going to get better from here and so uh, i'm already excited to see that uh, you know there's a, a level one a level two there's talks about mandatory requirements in the future when dealing with uh, government organizations so those all tell me that there's some investments being made and uh, while it was slow to maybe to get started based on the circumstances i'm really looking forward to the future I mean, fully matured, that, that's the goal, right? Is that, you know, you're putting an RFP or you're, you're, you're choosing folks who are in your supply chain service providers, and you just want to make sure that you're not exposed because of their exposure. And so you can say, are you Cybersecure Canada? Or, this is the way it works, right, Vanessa, I think, in, in the UK. Like, it, it just, it's, it's become where you've got to be Cyber Essentials UK certified in, in certain industries just to play ball, to be, yeah. And we, and we all hope that happens here with Cybersecure Canada. And this really becomes a, a business differentiator. And I think that's what, um, you know, is really the push around this is um, you're taking cybersecurity seriously. You're, you're protecting your clients' data if you're interacting with them and, and your own business. And, uh, you know, we want to wear this as a, bad, a badge of honor um, as it relates to being an early adopter. And so um, I know we're going to hear from uh, from Eddie soon, and um, he can definitely speak towards some of those elements. But uh, we thought absolutely. as a service provider, as an IT service provider, we absolutely needed to be the front runner in this. And that's why we went and got it immediately as soon as it came out. So there's, there's before we bring on Eddie, there's kind of one thing I want to probe with you, Calvin, because I think there's there's a logic, hey, we want to be at the forefront of cybersecurity, be seen to be so, and uh, and really support this program. So we got Cybersecure Canada certified. Notice we're not one of the four certified bodies. So why don't you illustrate what's our role and what are we doing to help organizations achieve these 13 controls? Yeah, so um, a lot of the elements that we uh, we see in those controls are elements that we're um, baking right into our program, our programs like F12 Infinite. So um, just by being an infinite client, you already have many of these controls already built. And so the technology is already in place. It is then just going through the process, ensuring that some of the policies and procedures within your own organizations are then uh, are buttoned up and those are very obtainable but the the intent is that we don't want to just do the bare bones we don't want to just do the basics we're going above and beyond in many areas to ensure that uh, it's not just these controls it's controls of the future the controls that uh, the federal program is going to eventually push down irregardless and so we're we're, we're having that advocacy at the level uh, with the Chamber of Commerce to ensure that we are going in higher and uh, and really just to protect the organizations and the people within them. Yeah, okay. That's important to understand. I, I actually like that we're not a certification body. I, I think somebody else should double check. I think it's always important to get the, uh, on these critical matters. So we're here to help. We built both the Infinite program and our latest iteration of F12 Select around the controls. Um, you get the technologies. There is an avenue you have to do in terms of policies and procedures like your your uh, response plan, et cetera. Um, and we're really proud to have a couple of clients who've gone through that journey and others who are getting there. And I will say this, if whether you get certified or not, implement the controls and then explore certification. They are fantastic. I, I'm passionate about getting it, proudly putting that on your website and others and in your responses to clients, I think is, is critical. Um, that's a, for sure an, a benefit. But uh, well, rather than, than me go on, let, let's talk to somebody who made the decision. Because I think it's like, I get, people go, okay, yeah, F12 is in IT. Of course, they're all about IT security. They'd be insane not to be. Um, but we've got Eddie. Which uh, let's let's bring up Eddie if you don't mind, uh, and we'll, we'll, I'm so excited, Eddie, to have you join the conversation. 
Eddie Lamontagne. He's the VP of Timmins Mechanical Solutions. And Eddie, I, if I understand correctly, we just got to meet through this. You're not a client of F12. So this isn't like a, a promo spot as much as it is. I was so intrigued to discover you're not in technology yet. You are one of the first organizations, I think the first in Northern Ontario, if I'm not mistaken, to embrace Cybersecure Canada, proudly to speak about. And I understand you, 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 you get to be vocal about it, Eddie. So first of all, before we get into Cybersecure Canada, tell us a little bit about Timmins Mechanical Solutions. It's kind of set the, set the stage for us, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, first thing, uh, my name is Eddie Lamontagne. I'm the VP of Timmins Mechanical Solution. Uh, the owner, and I'm setting the story because it's going to make sense at the end. The owner is 34 years old. So he started business at 25. So he's 34. I'm 61. Impressive. So we don't see eye to eye for technology. We don't see eye to eye for this kind of stuff. So um, many years ago, he started his business in 2014, 15. Um, we just built a new shop two years ago. We moved in. So I've been here about three years. So we built this brand new shop. Uh, state of the art, and then uh, we have about 44 technicians or employees. Uh, we're running low, so we had to pull from all sides to get uh, mm. technicians. We can't get them, so now we're going through the immigration process. So, right now, I have a gentleman from Peru and a gentleman from Colombia. So, and we're getting more and more. So, going through all, all these things, we, we, my boss says, Well, what about our security? You know, I said, hey, I'll hire a guy and he'll watch the door. He said, no, but cybersecurity, like <laughs> the whole thing. I said, well, that's kind of a waste of money. He says, no, you'll see. And then the gentleman by the name of Mike Crocco pulled in and he says, you know, there is more than one advantage to this program. And I, I said, yeah, for sure, for sure. So he, I wrote a couple of quotes I, I want to read because you'll understand more why I got to this. And first is Northern Ontario defense readiness program has assisted Timmins Mechanical Solutions through our program funding, specifically phase two cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's more companies. We're the first one in Northern Ontario. There's more coming through. But the other one is Northern Ontario defense readiness program is pleased to assist Northern Ontario group. So what that means for us, uh, and uh, it's a dream, but we were, we were invited to attend the uh, show in Ottawa for the defense. And you can only bid on contracts if you're cybersecurity. So from a small operation, you know, we can, and I'm, I'm good at bragging. I love bragging. We're bragging that this is how secure we are to our clients. So it's been a real differentiator you found. Like you, you, you've used that as yeah. a bit of marketing, really. Oh, 100%. Uh, you know, we're, we're kidding with the guys. Maybe one day we'll build missiles here in Timmins. But <laughs> we have large companies that wants to be able to trust you, trust you with their data and, and all the information. So we're dealing with people from Australia, uh, Peru, and all those countries. So they don't want to, they want to make sure you're safe. So by making sure that we are, that, that goes a long ways. I just love it because really this is, this solves a fundamental market challenge which is, we see it in IT. So we say we're doing all these security things. And at the end of the day, it comes down to just trust us. Yeah, why? Because he's a nice guy. He's got a loud blue shirt on, must be honest. Who's actually validating that these things are in place? And this is where programs like Cybersecure Canada and SOC 2 Type 2 actually make a difference. So I, I, I really love that message, Eddie. Anything else about the program or the experience of doing it that, uh, you know, getting enrolled that you'd like to share? It was painful. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Does know, that mean you were kind of behind? Would you say I, I don't want you know, a, security? We had a full time gentleman just doing that. Like for oh. an operation of back then, we're thirty employees. We had to dedicate a person for six months. His name is Tony Port. He had to be on that almost full time, and then he crashed my system and bring it back up just to do some testing. Really frustrated me, but now I understand why. <laughs> he want to make sure that you know he 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 went through some scenarios, and we all got upset and. But it was for the better of the team that I realized well, that today. What an interesting journey. So uh, what I didn't know, Eddie, till this conversation now is you're a little bit of a reluctant uh, party to this whole, uh, and, and you, you, is it fair to say you've seen the light? Like you're, oh, I yes, understand yes. you're an advocate for it now, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, like I say, when I joined uh, Chad's team, I was about 58, third time that I retired. And then uh, 
I said, well, I'm just going to go back and coach the young Chad Tolman, coach him, you know, how to run his business and all that. And then this gentleman says, hey, we should try this. We can get a, you know, a defense contract. I said, well, that's a bit dream there. But then I realized what it meant. It means for our client. It mm-hmm. means for our bank. It means for our finance. It means for everything. So I'm I'm sold on it. We I'm very glad we got it. Curious if I could ask you one more question of the of that six months where you're getting yourself set, getting the controls in place, getting the policies in place, validating them, etc. What was the what was the biggest challenge for your organization? Which which, which what was the hardest part of all of that? Gathering all the information together, like mm. pulling it from here and there. We're a junior company. Uh, like I said back then, we had about thirty employees, thirty two. So gather the information and make sure everybody's on the same page and then, you know, set up security profile, set up different uh, system or process to make it happen. Uh, That's great. And thanks for sharing the experience. Uh, By the way, everybody who's on this, Eddie has uh, a really great LinkedIn um, presence. I was surprised, Eddie. You're you're almost uh, you're a Canadian celebrity, certainly by those standards. So you know, everybody, I encourage you to follow on LinkedIn. Eddie will share information about if you're curious, if you want to get like the honest truth of what the program's like. Calvin, for sure. Calvin is always available to talk about it. Um, but you know, we approach it from an IT, and it's safe to say, Calvin, we would have had lots of things documented already. There's still work to be done because of the other certifications that we do. Eddie, you had to come into it cold, largely cold, a bit of a different experience. Um, uh, and, and of course, you didn't have us there to help you. So uh, it's another little That's point. Correct. Yeah, th- th- this is great. We're gonna con- we've got some Q and A coming and some questions. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring up uh, and and g- gather for everybody here. Um, you know, you were mentioning about the defense industry and asking. We got this question come in. Is there any work being done by insurance companies? This is an interesting one because insurance companies have to rate the risk of providing cybersecurity insurance. And I would argue um, funds transfer fraud insurance and all the other insurances that can come from social engineering and all the, those sorts of things. Um, are they looking at any kind of a, is there work being done to kind of get a discount or preferential rate because somebody's certified on cybersecure Canada? Any comments on that? Sure, gonna, gonna, oh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sure. Thanks, Eddie. Um, So we've had a lot of those discussions. Devin, as you mentioned, our program did kind of come out just as COVID was starting. So we'd had a lot of those discussions with the insurance industry. There was a lot of traction at first, but as you can imagine with COVID, as you know, prices of premiums have gone up, you know, insurance companies have been taking a bit of a loss. So it's on pause right now. That is what I hear. Like it's been terrible for them. Yeah. It has been. So unfortunately that that's impacted that, but Longer term, that's certainly a goal we're looking to explore because we understand that obviously this would provide a great, great, you know, resource to them and they're having clients that are more secure um, in the interim, you know, it's it, case by case basis, you know, some of them are looking at them. Some insurers are asking for SOC too. So, you know, but again, something that we're working on longer term for sure. Eddie, you had something you wanted to add there. That's the first thing I'm going to check on after this is my insurance and see what it makes a difference. And if it does, I'll be right on LinkedIn telling everybody. So I will tell you, we we have somebody on this almost full time at F12 side. I've, we have a great individual. Uh, her name's Lynette. She's our VP of strategic partnership. She's been talking to insurance brokers and underwriters across the country to find those who have an appetite because we think we have a strong case saying, hey, the clients on F12, if they've got these controls, if they've got Cybersecure Canada, um, the the risk is clearly less than it would be otherwise, um, and it, and it's validated, uh, and they should have preferential rates. Unfortunately, we've got a few that are willing to play ball, and so um, if you're a client of F12, make sure you talk to your account manager. We have some referrals for you, but I would prefer. It's nice that we have this in, but I would prefer it to be where it should be, which is a national. You get this, and then everybody's you know doing a rate, and it's it's not just you know, ad hoc. It's, uh, it's universal. And we're, we're trying to be advocates for that for sure. And uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, and I just think about that SOC 2 type 2, which if you're a SaaS provider, if you're in certain industries, that is way too expensive to require for uh, us, most SMEs. The barrier to entry is, you know, I know Calvin, you lose like a month of your life every year for that audit, right? It's uh, it is painful. Um, a question for you guys is, is what, what, what do you, and maybe this is more for Vanessa. Um, what's next for the program? 
So it's it's been two years. I understand, Calvin. I should mention we're we're actually coming up for our renewal, aren't we? It's been the we two are. years. We were an early adopter, so uh, you'll you'll be back in it. So tell us a little bit about where this goes from here, Vanessa. Sure. Um, so you know, like I mentioned, awareness building is a huge piece. Um, the up, uptake of our current client base is still largely within the IT sector. So you know, organizations like F12. But you know, we know that cyber breaches are sector agnostic. You know, there's certain sectors that actually get hit more. Manufacturing being one of them. So we have a huge part to play in awareness building, going to events like this and making sure that SMEs realize that, you know, this is attainable for them. This is within their reach. And this is really something that they need to be thinking of. And, you know, even if organizations are not ready at the point where they actually are ready to be certified, even if you're taking those 13 controls as, you know, best practices that you're implementing within your organization, you know, just look at them, read them, get a better sense of what that entails and think about how you can apply those across your own, own organization and then maybe explore the certifications when you're ready. You know, start small. It's not a one size fits all and it's not an all or nothing. There's little things you can do along the way. Uh, like longer term, I think we really want to increase the brand and awareness and have it kind of be that recognized symbol. You know, we're doing a lot of that with the national standard, but, you know, to get it to be that recognized symbol and, and really have that, that understanding of, of what that kind of stands for. And going, you know, longer term, ideally having something like this be more mandatory, but that's still a, it's still a ways away, but just really targeting as many businesses as we can, getting out there and, and changing some minds so people like Eddie can become strong believers in this program. Yeah, awesome. And, I mean, the supply chain will be better. We'll be a safer country uh, and, and all sorts of things like that. I It's almost scary when you, I suppose this is true of, of a lot of things, when you, when you know too much information, it, it, that's what I feel like we're like in IT, like to know that basically, you know, hosted exchange servers that weren't in the cloud were exposed to a foreign entity for the mm -hmm. better part of last year. Um, and then oops, and they, it, it's it just it, you know, basically to think everybody's email was stolen by a certain country, which uh, I won't name because I don't want to be attacked. Um, uh, that's uh, it's, it's just frightening to know. And, and there's the state actor, right? And that's mm -hmm. an issue. And we've got CSIS and other agencies that help us with that. But then there's the criminal enterprise, which which caught us all by surprise because hacking used to be the, the teenager who was just doing it for vandalism or whatever. And then it became big business. And then it became billion dollar business. And then it became multi-billions of dollars of business of ransom and all that sort of stuff. And and, and the game is changed. And these are, these are really important measures. Um, the, the questions come up about policies. If 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 you may know uh, anything about this, Vanessa, if there's anything that might be coming from the provinces or any other federal programs uh, regarding SMEs for cyber that uh, the audience should be aware of. Sure. So one of the great things about this program is that we do get to talk to all of our provincial counterparts, and we've had some really great discussions, you know, with our counterparts in Alberta and Manitoba, in Ontario, where I'm based, and we've had a lot of great uptake in a number of the provinces have indicated that they're looking to leverage our national standard when they're developing some of their own policies on cyber. Federally, we're seeing you know, huge amounts of dollars annually going into cybersecurity. The budget was released earlier this month, you know, upwards of 800 million, things like that. Provincially, you know, obviously not to the same scale and extent, but you know, within those sectors of focus. So within Alberta, obviously, really that support for the critical infrastructure, oil and gas. Within Manitoba, we're seeing, you know, focus on interprovincial trade. How does cyber regulations impact those things? So things like that is a lot of what we're seeing in Ontario. There's also a lot of um, a lot of industry kind of coming together with government. So you know, here in Ontario, there's some work being done by this Rogers Cybersecure Catalyst. They have these strategic partnerships with Mastercard, with RBC, to really kind of supplement the work that the provincial governments are do are doing and get more of that national alignment happening. In terms of some federal programs, I, I can highlight those or if you wanted me to jump on those or if you want to. Yeah, sure, please do. So there's a lot of really good ones and I love events like this because I get to bring awareness to programs that people might not know about. So some of the big ones, there's a really big one that came out earlier this month. It's called the Canada Digital Adoption Program. And this is a huge focus of government, you know, with more businesses going online during COVID, more adopting these digital tools, mm -hmm. risk for cyber attacks. So this program gives grants and loans to small businesses. Um, so the one that is probably more relevant for our viewers today, it's called, it's a stream too, it's called Build Your Business Technology. So it's for SMEs that um, I will flag, you do need to have 
an annual revenue minimum of at least $500,000. And so if you fit that, you will be able to get $15,000 to build a digital plan and then access to a wage subsidy of around $7,000 to hire a youth placement. And you'll also get access to a $1,000 0% interest-free loan. So all of those things can be used to uh, you know, implement the controls, bring on a provider to help you implement the controls, bring on a student, and really kind of offset some of those costs of the certification. Another program I'll speak to just very quickly. Um, this is more for companies that are conducting research and development in Canada. So if you're conducting research and development, you're working with IRAP, it's called the Industrial Research Assistance Program. And through that program, you actually will have access to 25 hours of free cybersecurity consulting. So if you're a client of IRAP, you'll have uh, an advisor that you work with, and I can share this information, but essentially you'll get 25 hours of free cybersecurity consulting. They'll sit down with you, help you develop a plan, whether it's to implement these controls, whether it's to just develop some kind of cyber posture for your organization. It's another really great resource that I think your clients should be aware of. Fantastic. And so I think we'll get this all together and fire it out to all the attendees. So they, they have the links. These programs is sometimes hard to keep up with. So thank you, Vanessa, you know, for sharing them. And uh, it, it's great to see. And I know some of it's about digital adoption generally. Some of it's about cybersecurity. I was really excited to see the focus on, you know, again, kind of Canadian pride. The, the OECD put us, I think everybody knows now, on the, the bottom for um, productivity growth over the next while. Not, not near the bottom, everybody, the bottom of the OECD. And I love that there's things like, what can we inject to make sure Canada continues to advance so our standard of living doesn't uh, erode over time, which will be the result of that if that uh, plays out. Um, fantastic. Uh, Eddie, did you get this on your own or were there pro government programs to help you guys on your journey? You were really early, so I'm curious about how that worked out for you. Well, we got helped out by the uh, 5DC, which is mm -hmm. Development Corporation. They nice. helped us quite a bit, you know, get fundings and all that. So that that was very really nice. Uh, again, with the my friend Mr. Croco, he, he did an excellent job to guide us and help us. So excellent, perfect. Couple of questions we've got here that have just come in, so I'll, I'll get to them as we wrap up the last couple of minutes of this discussion. Are there policy and procedure templates that they could use as a starting point to assist in in the development? I, I see you nodding, Vanessa. Yes. Thank you for somebody for asking this, because this is a great resource I want to draw everybody's attention to. So I spoke a little bit about those e-learning modules, but I think the most valuable part of those e-learning modules is that there's templates embedded in them. So if you go and you work on the e-learning module for an incidence response plan, we have a Word document template for an incidence response plan that you can download and just fill in and customize for your organization. So I will share the link for the e-learning modules, but I think those templates are a great resource that is really going to save businesses time so they're not they're not wasting their time they're not starting from scratch and they have these kind of government approved and endorsed templates that they're working off of fantastic and um if you're a client of f12 you know reach out to your account manager if you're interested in exploring this journey as calvin articulated our role our role in this is to help you get those controls in place and make sure the technology is there validated uh, and then uh, and Calvin can also provide a recommendation for certification bodies and maybe Eddie can too because he would have worked with somebody um, don't know if you either of you are comfortable sharing a recommendation now, but there's maybe we won't because Vanessa said you should do the due diligence and check out all four so we'll, we'll leave it at that I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to prejudice anything but if offline you're interested in uh, a referral or a discussion about the process uh, certainly Calvin's uh, open for that um, fantastic. Well, we have no more questions. So I think we'll conclude just to saying thank you very much, um, Vanessa, Calvin, and Eddie, for taking time to highlight this really awesome, excellent, wonderful program for the small and medium organizations in Canada. Uh, and uh, I encourage everyone to uh, have a look and refresh. And I, I another nugget I got is that the program is going to evolve. So. If you looked at it last a year ago, maybe you want to look at it again in a few months as as the standards evolve and change and uh, make sure you're keeping abreast and you have another expert opinion. Uh, it's, you know, the this is all comes down from bodies that know that specialize in cybersecurity and, uh, and and their advice should be heeded. That's what I'd say. Thank you all very much. And uh, thank you for attending.